I'm so excited for our next guest. He is a professor of virology at Columbia University. His course is free on YouTube, and I was able to watch a couple of the lectures a couple weeks ago, and it just set my head on a, and, and our, our path on a completely different direction than where everyone else was headed. And I'm super grateful for him. He's also hosted a podcast for 12 years called This Week in Virology. And I imagine these last few weeks have been pretty, there's been a lot of show content, uh, 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 <laughs> a lot going on. Vincent Racaniello is here. Professor, how are you, sir? Well, thank you for having me. Good to be here. Good, good to talk to you. So first thing I got to start with, your intro course or the, uh, the, the first lecture. You talk about the prevalence of viruses. And I love this perspective because I think there's this perception out there that we can just wash our hands and all the viruses go away and we can clean the viruses from our environment. And obviously that's not true. There's billions and billions of viruses nonstop all the time. We're eating them, breathing them, whatever. Here's what doesn't make any sense to me, Professor. You shared a fact that, correct me if I'm wrong, if you take all the viruses in the ocean that live off of bacteria and you lined them up head to toe they would go from here to 100 million light years? Right, 100 million light years, farther than, than Pluto. Talking? Yeah, there are a lot of what viruses. You, you can't even see them. That's the amazing part. You can't see them, yet there's more of them than anything else on the planet. Well, how can that possibly be? How can there be that many? That's because <laughs> one of the strategies of a virus is to make a ton of itself right a virus gets into a cell, whether it's a bacteria or a cell like our cells, and they take over the cell and make tons and tons, millions and millions of themselves, of copies. And that's why there's so many, and that's their strategy, because of all those offspring, if you will, very few of them are going to find another cell to, to infect and take over and reproduce. So the strategy is to make mm -hmm. a lot, and that's why there's so many on the planet, just the oceans alone. It's, it's amazing. They're all over everywhere i tell I mean, people you're breathing them you're you mike right now you're breathing them in most likely <laughs> yeah and that and that but that's wild too because at that point you can't just you can't rid the world of them or your environment of them that's an absurdity right oh you cannot and if you did if you could get rid of all the viruses in the world probably all life would stop within a few weeks so we do need them what what good do they do well in the oceans they help to turn over all that organic matter that then ends up giving us carbon and phosphorus and other uh, materials that we need for life. So they're really important inside those kind of things we call geochemical cycles. Uh, they help keep populations in check. They probably contribute uh, factors that we don't even know about. They probably help our immune systems mature, all sorts of things. Um, uh, I bet you are, I bet you are incredibly frustrated every time you watch the news or pick up a newspaper with just how wildly ignorant everyone is about this stuff. Well, I, I am frustrated. I, I don't think of people as ignorant because they should come to me and learn. I can teach them about viruses, but mm -hmm. most people don't want to spend a lot of time doing that. But yes, I'm extremely frustrated at hearing all the sorts of things. And that's why we've been doing this podcast for 12 years to try and get the facts yeah. to people. And it's only now that we've been discovered in big numbers, but we should be being discovered even more what is it, people? Don't watch movies on Netflix. Watch us. <laughs> learn. Learn some stuff. Uh, this week in virology. So let, let me just throw a couple your way and then anything else that's frustrating you. So this idea of mutating, viruses mutating to be more deadly or whatever. Uh, viruses mutate all the time, but what does that really mean to us? So every time a virus goes into a cell, you know, it makes mistakes. And the genomes that come out have errors. And some of them fail and some of them don't mean anything. But what it means to us is really very little until it means something. So the coronavirus is changing every time it goes into a cell and then comes out again. And those changes don't really mean anything, but the press makes it seem like they mean something. And one of the latest ones that killed me was, well, coronavirus is mutating. What does it mean for vaccines? Well, it means nothing. These viruses don't escape immunity, not like flu. Influenza viruses do. We know they're a great example of that. Mm. So they are the mutation means something. But for most other viruses, it's really a very little consequence, it, especially a human virus like this one. It's really good at infecting people. If you hadn't noticed, it doesn't need to get better. It's perfect. It's a perfect virus. So why, the mutations why, are part why? of a virus life cycle, if you will, and they're necessary for it to be able to be flexible and find a new cell or a new environment.
Slater Crusaders, thanks for watching the first on YouTube. If you want more, like, subscribe. We got plenty.